Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the Users and Groups area in Profile Manager as a way to manage uh, these profiles. Now you can choose to manage by users or groups. Uh, so those are users and user groups or devices and device groups. And so we're going to talk about when to do that. Uh, typically you'll use your users area when you have settings that will be global across devices. And you'll have your devices when you're managing things specific to particular devices like iOS devices or Mac devices. So we're going to talk about the users part first, but just wanted to let you know that those options are available. So now when we come in here, uh, you can see I'm on the settings tab here and you can see we've got settings for myself and I've got a general setting here. This is where I would configure my profiles. So if I just uh, click here on edit, you'll see that I get this settings screen and what I'm going to do now is configure a profile. And you can see it says one payload configured and a payload is a profile. So that profile will be delivered to the device and any changes I make will take place on that device. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you things that are specific to a user that you might set up and then we'll go into detail on some of the other settings that relate to devices. So you can see here on the side I've got things divided by categories. I've got things that affect Mac OS, iOS, and TV OS. So this affects everything thing in these settings here. If I scroll down, these are things that would only work for iOS and tvOS. Here are iOS specific settings. And then if I go all the way down here, here's macOS specific settings. And then at the very bottom, I've got tvOS specific. So I'm going to cover those when I talk about the uh, macOS and iOS devices and how to manage them. But what I'm going to do right now is show you the ones that might be general to a user. So the first thing here is we've got general itself. And you can see here we've got things about the profile distribution type. I can choose to make it automatic push, which means that as soon as I set it, it's automatically going to push the change to devices or manual download, where you'd have to go to the My Devices screens and then download the profile. In many cases, it's best to use the automatic push because then once I make the change, I don't have to think about it. It's gone. It's already happening. Uh, but there may be times where you want it to be manually installed, and you can do that that way as well. Here I can put the organization information as well as a description of the organization. And then I've got security controls on when the profile can be removed. And what you'll notice is I can choose to have it always available to be removed, uh, removed with authorization where I set a passcode that has to be used to be put in, or never where the person can never remove it from that device. It can only be removed through Profile Manager itself and me coming into this website and making the change. So if you've got kids, let's say that you're managing their devices, you may want to do it with authorization. So you can take it off when you need to when you're in front of the device uh, or you'll do never where you can just use the web uh, access it just depends on how you want to do it but those options are available right there and then I can automatically remove a profile either never or I can set a date or a uh, time interval so for instance if I've got somebody who may be coming into my business they're going to be here for a week let's say to do some kind of work uh, I can go and give them uh, a week's worth of access and then once that week's up the profile gets removed and they no longer have access to those settings so again kind of a nice way of handling profiles but that's what the general area is and the nice thing is if I do it by user it goes across to all of the different devices that I have here now I can also set up a network login and so I can do that for my Wi-Fi uh, or for hotspot or Ethernet. You can see all the different things that I have right here. Uh, and I can put in my SSID and then I can also put in a uh, password for the user or SSID and then they can use their password in here uh, to get it all set up. You can see the different encryption for the security there uh, that I've got set up. And once I put that in, it'll have passwords for it. And, uh, and all of that. So again, really nice that I can set this up and push it to a user and to all of the devices I have for that user, then the network will be configured on those devices. Uh, I can do the same thing with certificates. If I just click on configure here, I can configure different certificates if they're needed on my particular network. I can set them up here. And I've also got certificate transparency. So uh, I can choose excluded certificates that I don't want added to my devices as well as excluded domains uh, so that those are enforced as well. So it's a really nice setup there. Now, in addition to that, we also have the uh, simple certificate enrollment protocol. And this is where you can set up information for mobile device management in here. Uh, if you've got particular certificates for that, and you can see that all of the information is set up right there. Uh, again, that would be used in uh, you know more advanced situations or if you've got another mobile device management server. In our case, we're actually using the server itself. Uh, but if you come down here, uh, these are things that go across Mac and iOS. So these are good things to set up per user as well. 
Uh, things like your passcode uh, setup. If I just configure that, you can see that I can set up what my password protocol is. I can set up if I want a, a particular length of password here, uh, the number of complex characters. I can set that up in here as well, the minimum age of a password till it has to uh, be renewed and you got to set up a new password. Uh, auto lock, uh, you can see all the information there. So I can set this up here and this will go across both Mac and my iOS devices. So I'll set it once for a user and then it goes across those. I can do the same for mail. And so I can configure my mail server information in here for a user. Again, that way it'll get pushed to both their Mac and iOS devices. There's incoming and outgoing mail. I can set all of that up in here. I can do the same for Exchange. I can set up my Exchange server information in here as well. And I can also do the same thing for Open Directory. So if I've got any kind of Open Directory that I want to connect my uh, actual users too on their devices, I can set up that information in here as well. Uh, there is an open directory available on a Mojave server. Uh, it's an advanced feature. I'm going to show you how to set that up, but there's a number of things that we have to have in place for that to work. So out of the box, you would not have an open directory that you'd be using this for. Uh, contacts, if I've got a contacts server, I can set that information up here as well, uh, as well as a calendar server. If I've got my own calendar server, I can put that info in here too. And then the same is true with VPN. Uh, I've got all the different settings for VPN. So uh, again, uh, because Mojave Server uh, does not have the VPN service included, I may have an outside uh, VPN setup that I want to put information in here. Uh, I can do that uh, as well from this spot here. So if you have like VPN enabler or something like that going, you can set your information in here from that app and have that pushed to your devices so VPN is automatically set up on your Mac and iOS devices. I can also set up web clips. So if I have, uh, I can put a label in here and then a web address, and then it'll create an icon. So once I click on that icon, it'll take me right to that website. Uh, this is really good for uh, iOS devices. If you wanted to have, let's say, the corporate website as an icon on the home screen, you could put that on there and it will be sent uh, to those devices. Uh, the same with fonts. And so if I've got a font set that I want to have across my iOS and Mac devices, I can upload the font file right here. And then that file will be pushed to all of my devices. And then finally here, I've also got AirPlay. And so I can configure how AirPlay works. I can choose the devices and the password. Uh, and I can even restrict AirPlay destinations uh, if I decide to supervise the actual device, which means that I have control of it, not the user. Uh, I could do that. Otherwise, this is just uh, here to set up the device name and the password so that if you're in a corporate office, you can go and use AirPlay and have everything set up for you and ready to go. Uh, down here we have things for TV, OS, and uh, iOS. And so, uh, again, I'll just show you this real quick. We can set up a global proxy here if we need to do that, and any app configuration for uh, iOS or TV OS. So if I've got uh, a bundle identifier app with a payload and configurations, I can upload that right here. Uh, again, you won't use that very often, but just wanted to show you that that's here. So that shows you all of the different settings that I would set up for an individual user uh, if I was managing by uh, the actual user or group instead of by device. I'm just going to hit cancel here so we go back to normal. Uh, what you can do uh, with groups is you can set up groups of users. You can see here I've got uh, an actual setup for everyone. So all of the users are in here and you can see there's all of the different uh, restrictions that we talked about before. Uh, and I can come down to activity, apps, settings, all of that. And I would come in here and I could actually configure settings by group instead of just per individual. This is usually uh, the best to do is to put all of your users inside this, uh, inside a group and then do your configuration profile if it's similar for everybody. That way it gets pushed to all the users instead of having to go one user at a time. That's when you would use that. So that gives you an idea of how the users and groups work. Uh, again, if you're wondering how does this work with devices, uh, over here I've got the devices for this particular user. So any changes I make to that profile would be pushed to any devices that I have under that individual user. Uh, unless I'm doing it by group, then it'll go to every device for every user that's inside that group. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.